Hi, in this video, I'll be studying a form of equations known as exact equations. So, let's begin with a motivating example. So, we already learned how to solve linear first order equations and separable equations. Then, under separable, we have autonomous equations. And so the question now is maybe we can sometimes solve equations that are nonlinear. And this is possible if they are known what is known as exact equations. But of course, let's keep in mind that such elementary integration methods will always be special and actually in reality most first order equations cannot be solved this way either. But it's good to still be able to solve another class of equations. So let's take an example to see. Let's say we have the differential equation of the following form. What we can see is that this equation, if you differentiate it, it will equal to this over here. If we think about it. Let's say we differentiate this. Then we'll get... It will... These two are very closely related in a sense. So, how do we see is that we let this be one function by itself and let the coefficient of y prime be another function. Then we just see that this can be known as the derivative of psi, o psi with respect to x and this is known as the derivative of psi with respect to y. Because if you differentiate this with respect to y, then you'll be it'll be two y. And if you differentiate this with respect to x, it will also be two y. So you can see somehow they are equal in that sense. So they are partial. They are partial derivatives with respect to y on this side and x on this side are equal. And so actually the differential equation can be written as the following over here. And because of this, we can combine this to being a derivative in terms of x only. And so we just need to choose a function such that the x derivative is this and the y derivative is this. And we see that x squared plus xy squared serves to be such a function. And so integrating, we see we get that psi equals to x squared plus xy squared equals to c, where c is a constant. And so this becomes a solution for the differential equation so you can, what you see is that you deal with the partial derivatives so let's continue and then you understand why we come into this conclusion in the end so more generally we can let a differential equation be of the general form and we just let the m function be the psi with respect to x and the n function be the side differential partial derivative with respect to y. Then we need to define a function such that implicit dif differentiating this function with res phi with respect to x will give us the answer that we want. So the differential equation of 6 becomes of the following form and now we can say that this equation that is satisfied is known as the exact differential equation because you can exactly solve the equation be it defi defining implicitly or explicitly but most of the cases the equation will come out implicit So we have a theorem because we want to know when is our equation exact. So let's say we have the following 
functions and they were all continuous basically. Make it simple. Then the equation becomes exact if and only if your the partial derivative of m with respect to y equals to the partial derivative of x with res n with respect to x. And you can already roughly see why that's so. And that's because like in this case this is a partial derivative of x and this is a partial derivative of y. Then if you partial derivative this is y and this with x again, then they are like this is the psi dy dx. This is the psi dx dy. But you can see both are like the same at the bottom. So like you can just interchange the two anytime. So they should be equal lah, in that sense. So now we want to prove this theorem and actually the proof isn't very hard. It's really about verifying the result and we already understand that it will be true because we got our intuition from multivariable calculus. So first we show that if a function satisfies equation 7, then of course the derivatives must equal because the partial derivatives can be changed in any order and they will be equal. So the equality of the partial derivative, the one direction is very clear and for the next direction, now we suppose that these two functions are equal and we want to show that the equation is exact. So now we just need to construct the phi in a special way but we already know how to construct the phi. Well, we just need to integrate this function with respect to x. And then we should get some function plus some constant. And that constant must be in terms of y. So because like y is considered, any terms in terms of y is considered a function when you partial derivative it. And then when you look at this now, what we want is we want this function to give us n when we differentiate with respect to x. So the q in our case, we can just choose it to be the integral of some x not to x and that will be fine but it doesn't really matter because what we want is we just say that there will be, it's like you integrate the x because you know m because you know it's continuous it'll be some function q la. then it is some constant at the end then now we want to show that it's always possible to find a hy such that the second equation is satisfied and you can just see it by differentiating this equation with respect to y and what we get is this. So solving for h prime, we get this. And in order to determine what is h, it has to be purely a function in terms of y. So the way you can show this is that you just differentiate with respect to 0. And we, and we respect to x and we'll see that it's 0. So just differentiate and you should get. So differentiate this with respect to x. This, this, differentiate this with respect to x as well. But because we can interchange the differentiation. We can bring this out to the dy. And but we already know dq dx is m. So actually this dm dy. But what we know is that these two are equal, so actually, it is 0. Hence, the derivative of this with respect to x is 0, means this is only in terms of y. So this gives us that we were able to solve the equation. Hence, this completes the proof for the theorem. So you can read it again once more if you do not understand and watch this video once more. And if you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. So with this theorem now, it gives us the ability to prove and solve equations that are exact. And so let now let us take a look at some examples and really this will familiarize ourselves with the technique of solving exact equations. So let's say you have the differential equation of the following form, which is very complicated, definitely nonlinear. 
And what we want to do is we want to see whether they, it's exact in the first place. So what we do is we take this, we differentiate with respect to y. And then we take this and we differentiate with respect to x. And we actually see that they are equal. So the equation is exact and now we can solve for the solution. So we know that the partial derivative with x is this, the partial derivative with y is this. So we just integrate one of them for any one of them. We obtain the following and then we just differentiate with respect to y now to get to solve for a h prime and we see that h prime is minus 1 and so when we integrate it back it will be h y equals to minus y as a result we can define the function to be of the following form and hence it will be implicitly given as y sine x plus x squared e y minus y equals to some constant c so I hope it's clear how to solve an, an exact equation. So it's quite straightforward. Now another example is of the following here. But in this case now, we actually see that the function, the, der the partial derivative are not equal. So this gives us some problems because the equation will no longer be exact. So we cannot solve it in the same procedure so let us now find a function phi such that the partial derivatives is what we want and we can see that we integrate the first side first and we just get the function that we want and then we try to satisfy the second equation by setting it equal to n and obtaining this we actually see that the right hand side depends both now depends on x as well as y. So it will never be satisfied for any we will never be able to solve for hy only. Thus there is no function satisfying the equation. So we actually cannot solve it. So you can do the very simple way of just saying it's not exact. So we might not be able to solve it. But if you actually do it down, you actually really show that you cannot find any functions. And that will be just from the proof that we already given that it's an if and only if. So what we need is we need to employ the help of integrating factors again. But in a more general context now. To help us solve it. So what we just need is multiply a, a function such that this equation become exact. What does it mean to be exact? Well, it means that this whole thing, now partial derivative y, equals to the u times n partial derivative x. And this implies that if you use the chain rule, you get the following result. And you'll be able to solve, if you're able to solve for the u, then you, then you can sum it back into the equation here and solve for y so let's just consider the following non-exact equation and we want to find the integrating factor and so we just need to solve for this linear equation and we see that u equals to x hence multiplying our differential equation by u we can obtain the following so it's just multiplying x basically and with this we are able to give the solution over here because now this is an exact equation so you can just use the standard way of solving it and you should get this as the implicit solution so that's all for this video i hope you have enjoyed it if you have any questions leave it in the comments sections down below and i will answer it please like share and subscribe to boost the algo and i'll see you again bye